Okay, and welcome back. Uh, we have a special guest joining the show. His name is Mark Kaz, and he's an avid hunter and fisherman who resides in Michigan. He uh, runs a website called KazVersusWild.com. Uh, Kaz has been practicing extreme survival and bushcraft for over eight years now. Uh, he writes articles and features for two magazines, that's Bug Out Mag and Surplus Today. He's also safety certified to teach and train with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts of America. Kaz also used to host a radio show with our old network, PRN Radio, years ago called Kaz vs. Wild. Kaz, welcome to the show, and we're glad to have you join us this evening. Hey, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. I, I am truly honored to be here. Well, we're uh, introducing our relaunch of our new radio network here, Watson Radio Network. And uh, uh saw you the other day, and I, I noticed you've got uh, your annual event going on. And we want, I just wanted to get you on the show and, and have you uh, share that with all of our listeners. Now, you, you've got a thing called Cas vs. Wild, and it's an annual survival camp. And uh, from what I understand, you've been doing this. This is what your eighth eighth year of doing this? Yeah, in September of 2017, it's going to be our eighth annual event. And I'm really excited that we have it. And I'm really excited that it's grown to be eight years. We're looking forward to nine and ten years as well. Gosh, I, you know, I remember back when you did your very first one and you put out the YouTube video. It just it doesn't seem like it's been that long, does it? It's crazy. Uh, it's gone by so fast, and it's been so awesome. Well, I, I think what makes this unique, and and, and this this camp, uh, folks, is it's totally an off grid situation. It's, you got no running water, no electricity, no pro, no propane, no no modern conveniences. <laughs> you know, Kaz, tell us about that. Well, the reason why we do it that way is we try to make it as, you know, as close to stuff hit as hit the fan as possible. And I, I was thinking about, you know, when I first set this up, you know, if we're going to do it, we need to do it right. And we've done it that way ever since the beginning. Um, you know, we teach people how to purify water on site. We don't have any running electricity except for if you have solar. We do use solar, and the reason why we use solar is because that is something you'd find in your bug out bag. And we don't use propane either because propane isn't something you're going to find in your bug out bag either. However, one year we did make an exception on propane because we did bushcraft canning out at the survival camp. So when we do this, we do it as close to a, a crisis event as possible. So we literally go right out into the middle of the forest, and I sh teach and we train. I show people how to set up a shelter, how to purify water, and we do it for eight days and seven nights. And it is just all hands-on. It's a very, very good educational format for both, you know, men and women. And, you know, kids are, you know, we always encourage kids you know, kids and, and children to come out because it's, it's important that they learn this too. And uh, it, we have it as close to a survival situation as possible. And, you know, it's just, it's so awesome when people come out and they learn and they understand by the time they go home, you know, they're just full of new information and new ideas on how to survive during an event or crisis. Well, you know, a lot of people watch these survival shows on TV. Now, they, they, what you don't see, you know, is they got all the camera people and they, they do have, you know, support mechanisms in the background, you know, when they're doing these shows, you know, uh, but this is, uh, is close to raw, this is raw survival. And it's not like you're out in a, you know, state park where you've got water slides and swimming pools and, porta potties nearby this this is the real deal right yes sir yes sir in, in fact we make our own privy out there uh bushcraft style uh you know and we use you know logs and and tree limbs and i show you exactly how to harness the tools found in nature and how to do that and it's you know the first couple of days for new people out there for the first time it's uh, it's very challenging, but what I 
try to teach people is is that you know before the United States got settled to the way it is now with all these modern conveniences, bushcraft and survival prior to the 1900s was everyday life, and it's really not that hard. All we have to do is re-educate our, ourselves on how to do it, and and that's the thing is that. You know, like you said, this isn't a state park or anything else like that. We go right out into the middle of the forest. We're like a mile in, sometimes two miles in, and we set up camp. And that is the real deal. That's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I could see where this would really and truly test the mantle of the average survivalist who, you know, they, they, think they've learned a few skills. They've picked up some things here and there. But if you want to really get out into the wild, you know, we're, you know, we're talking about the real woods where there's real bears and real creatures out there, real dangers, and really test yourself uh, in survival, that this would be the the experience you want to take, right? Absolutely. It, it, it absolutely is because the first two days are by far the hardest because what we live out of essentially is our bug out bag. And the first few days is when you realize what you've left behind and going into that situation. Okay. Now I don't have this. Now I don't have that. That's going to happen in a real situation. So to overcome that challenge, that's why we work together. And that's why the focus of my camp is on the community more so than individualism. So when that happens, we can pull together because, as you know, Mike, everybody has different strengths and everybody have, has different weaknesses. And when you can utilize everyone's strengths together, it's a better outcome for the group. So as a group, they work collectively to, to meet any shortfalls. Exactly. It's It's almost like a bartering system. You know, hey, can I borrow your axe? I'll let you borrow my water purification system, you know, so on and so forth. And it works really, really well in the, in the like, forest. Like, hey, I forgot my fire starter. Can I borrow yours? Right? Exactly. And, and, but the advantage to that is if, if the person who forgot his fire starter is not familiar with the other person's fire starter, that's a lesson learned right there, not only Absolutely. not to forget it, but how to use something new. Some, something else. That's right. 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 So what, what they've gotten used to that they've already had may not be what they're faced with out in the real survival scenario, and they may have to adapt to using other methods. That's right on, man. Yeah. That's, that's right on. You know, this is, this is absolutely awesome. I, I know you've been doing this a long time. How did you get started? I mean, what was your motivation? Well, my motivation was um, I was kind of thrust into this. I, I, I really, when I got started, I, I really had no idea that I was going to do this. And what happened was with the economic crash of 2008 and 2009, Mike, I lost everything except for my car. And I just took it upon myself being in that situation. I just promised myself that I would never be in that position again and that I would never be dependent upon the government and the government programs that they swear by are going to always be there for you. So I just took it upon myself once I started getting back on my feet to go out there and, and gain education from other people who were doing this, gain private education, gain tutoring. And as they, as, as the person grows, you know, they always say the student becomes the teacher. And as I began to grow and understand what bushcraft and survival was about, I decided that I wanted to move forward on this and uh, do it on my own and become the teacher. So you, you took it one step further and went into the survival aspect of raw survival. I mean, what, what if the absolute worst possible case scenario? Sure, okay, I may have lost my job, may have lost uh, my home or lost these things, but what if I were thrust into a situation where I had to really – uh, evacuate and go out and live off the land, uh, you kind of expanded it into that. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. That's right. And that's one thing that I do teach in my, in my private seminars. I do a lot of public speaking and I actually teach and show people how to map out a survival map, how to do it on foot, how to do it by vehicle 
and and you know if you have to use your bicycle or something i i teach that and i and i have mapping skills that that i have myself and i try to teach people how to understand those methods and those motivations on how to you know get to where you need to be based on your current situation no a lot of people feel that there's a, a large portion of our population that in a major catastrophe, a major chaos situation, a large portion of our population, they're not going to make it because they don't take the time to learn these skills. They take everything for granted. Do you you think complacency in our modern society has a lot to do with that? They're they're just too comfortable in their space and they don't really think anything's going to happen to them and they're going to be unprepared. Do you agree with that? I agree agree with that 100%. You know, the, the the thing about survival in bushcraft is I, I like to compare your bug out bag to a brand new car. And what I mean by that is a lot of people will build their bug out bag and they have it set and ready to go, but they don't practice with it. Mike, that's just like having a brand new car in your driveway and you put the keys in the cabinet, but you never drive it. So what's the point of having a brand new car in your driveway that you never drive? What's the point of having a bug out bag in your in your uh in your bedroom that you never train with you know it 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 doesn't make any sense to me no no yeah you're right you're right and i i you know i know people like that they they claim oh i've got everything i need i've got all my bug out gear and everything and i and you ask them you know when is the last time you actually took that bag out and put it into practice in the field and uh and they look at you all funny i i know exactly what you're talking about now, you mentioned survival and then bushcraft you know, training. Uh, what's the difference between, you know, survival and bushcraft skill sets? What's the difference in the two? Well, survival and bushcraft, um, in some aspects, some people say that they go hand in hand. And I'm not going to take away from that. They do go hand in hand. Survival is something that you're going to utilize when the crisis happens say you're going to be in survival mode for the first week or two when that crisis begins but long term we're talking one month two month six months on down the road your bushcraft skills are going to save you in the long run because survival is basically about getting water food shelter having your clothing all set up and everything else like that. But what's, but what's more important is, is that your, your bushcraft skills are set for you to go two, three, four months on into that crisis. Because your bushcraft skills are going to teach you how to build a shelter, how to maintain that shelter, how to create a long term food storage unit, things along that nature. So survival what I call survival mode is generally within the first one or two weeks into that event. Bushcraft skills are what's going to give you longevity in that event. Well, now we're, we're talking in terms of having to bug out. Now, a lot of people, you know, you may not be in a situation where you have to evacuate and bug out. There is a thing called sheltering in place, but we're, we're talking about extreme situations. It can be a natural disaster and the government's not there to, to, uh, you know, help anybody. And you're in a situation where you have to leave your present area, whether it be because of the disaster itself or whether it be because, you know, violence and, and, uh, chaos, uh, envelops the area and you got to get to safety. So we're talking about extreme bug out situations, right? Yes. Yep. So, so you have to go go out and into the wild because you you know you've got to get like you said you're in survival mode. So you know you've got to get to a place of safety. A lot of people have already you know picked out certain locations where they think they're going to go. Maybe it's in the woods. Maybe it's to a, a retreat a house, a vacation home, or something that they know about. Um, but it's out usually in a very rural area or. In this case, in extreme situations, you're actually evacuating out into the wilderness to get away from whatever the danger is, right? 
Yes, and that's one thing that I always stress is that you you have to have a location that you're going to. You're not going to, you know, go to the forest and live out in the forest for six months at a time, okay? You have to have a destination, which is another thing that I teach is 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 your bug-out location and prepping. You know, you need to prep your bug-out location. However, where all of this ties together, again, is the survival and the bushcraft skills that are going to take you to your living space, which could be in the city, like you just said, Mike, to your bug out location. Now, one thing that people tend to forget is that when that event is going on, you really don't know if there's going to be good ways to travel to that destination. For instance, um, winter is coming up real quick here. You know, we're going to hear about massive snowstorms all across the United States. We see it every year. Roads are blocked. People can't get in. People lose their power for, for a week or two on end. These are some great opportunities for people to prepare for this. Just like you said, Mike, some people will prepare in, in place. Okay. So this is, this is a, a, a really good focus point with winter coming up. It's a good focus point to get ready for this. And if you are going to travel, you need to figure out how because a one hour drive by car is four to six days on foot. And a lot of people don't understand that philosophy, so I'm going to break it down for you really quick, okay? If you drive one hour approximately at 60 miles an hour, okay, you're obviously in that one hour, you're going to, you're going to move 60 miles, okay? But you think about that on foot. If you've got all your gear, your bug out bag, you have your wife, you have your kids, oh, yeah. and things like that. If you get 10 miles a day, that's actually <laughs> pretty good. You'd be lucky. <laughs> and, and I have to agree, you would be lucky. So if you, you do, would be extremely lucky. Right. That's right. So if you do get that 10 miles a day, that's six days. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's simple math, folks. Yeah. You know, what? Why, why is survival and bushcraft training so important, even for ex-military people? The reason why it's so important is because these skills are perishable. If you're not constantly out there, you know, once a month, even in your backyard, Mike, if you're not out there using your flint and steel, if you're not out there, you know, using your knife and sharpening your knife and honing your skills, let alone keeping the blade sharp, those skills do dwindle away over time. You know, it's just like a sports figure. It's why they practice every day, you know, so they can get up there and always hit that home run when they need it. Survival is no different. Survival skills are perishable, and if you don't keep refining them, you're going to lose them. Well, it's practice makes perfect. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how many uh trained military people i've run into that you take them back now they're they've been in the service they've you know been in the sandbox or wherever and uh, they've been out they've come out and uh now you ask them to go back and revisit some of the very basic skills they learned in uh, boot camp and they have trouble recollecting some of those skills uh so i think i think that's absolutely true you have to keep those skills in tune. Uh, trying to remember, you know, how to read a compass right or a topographical map or things like that in an absolute chaos situation, that's not the time to try to refresh your memory, right? Yeah, that's, that's correct because, you know, it, it, just the things that we've talked about, Mike, can you imagine the, the, the idea of trying to refresh in your skills when it's Johnny on the spot time? You know, it, it's, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Not, not even to mention, you know, you got your wife who's counting on you. You got the kids who are screaming because they're hungry and thirsty, you know, and they want to, you know, then they want a good night's rest and they don't have the Xbox and they don't have the video games. And, and here you are, you're, you're in a situation where your skills are lacking. You know, that is just a recipe for disaster. Well, I guess you're right. I mean, in an extreme situation, let's take a basic skill like hunting. Uh, trapping things like that. Uh, when your family's hungry and you're, you know, you're down to 
having to resort to that to feed your family, that's not the time to try to remember those skills. You, you should have been practicing and honing those skills all along because uh, th- then it's do or die, right? Absolutely. And, and that's the whole thing. It is do or die because your family is depending on you as the leader of the family in this very important time. Now, you mentioned earlier about the community setting. You know, why does Cas versus Wild Survival Camp focus on the community setting and less on individualism because the community is is always going to be there regardless of of whatever situation you're in people always come together you see it all the time on the news when disasters happen you look at hurricane katrina you look at hurricane sandy people always come together to help each other out and the beauty of that is that people have different skill sets and different strengths. So it's very, very important to talk with your neighbors and talk with people who are in your area. Also, it's even more important to talk to people who are in your bug out area, where your bug out location is. You need to talk with those people as well because that's where you're going to end up. So the reason why we focus on community is because if, if you think that you're going to survive a crisis as an individual, You have a very, very low percentage of surviving. And the reason of that is is because if you get injured and you're basing everything on yourself, then you are in a very, very serious situation where you are less mobile and less apt to survive because you are injured. For instance, if you break an arm and you're not in a community setting, you are, you know, it's it's such a compromise of having one less hand than it is having two hands. It's like good luck building that shelter. Exactly. Right? Getting in out of the way. Exactly. <laughs> now let's make I, it, I can see right. That. Now let's make it even worse, Mike. What if you break a leg? Oh yeah. Then That's then true. you are really bad. So community. The reason why we focus on community is because everybody has strengths and weaknesses. And, it, and as a community, it becomes stronger. Well, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Now, looking over your website, I also notice that you often uh, have women attending your camps, and you encourage that for them to come out uh, and attend the survival camp and practice their skill sets. Why is that important? That's important, um, especially for a married couple. You know, uh, women play a huge role in survival. And I think many women, you know, they're afraid to open up into the survival aspect of it. Uh, and I, I'm just generalizing if, in case the ladies are listening that, you know, maybe some ladies are afraid to get their hands dirty or, or maybe they may feel intimidated by men because, you know, men are generally the hunters. Men are generally the people who are build the shelters and That is, for the most part, true. However, women think differently than men. And honestly, women tend to think things through, unlike men, where men are just like, they think about it and then they do it. Where women intellectually have a better overview in a crisis situation because women always think of several different things as opposed to men are just, you know, let's come up with one or two ideas and pick one and do it. Not to mention women are very nurturing with their children. So women are going to play a huge role in keeping the children calm and ready during the crisis event. So women are either Equally as important, and sometimes I feel women are even more important in that survival situation. And that's why we encourage women to come out because this is not just for the men. The women need to be there, and the women need to understand that they have a very important role in survival and bushcraft. It's all going to be about family, and when you're having to be forced into a situation like that, uh, having them participate uh, early on in learning how to do these things as a, as a unit 
uh, is every advantage as to waiting until the situation arises and then you're forced out there into the situation and uh, and then they, they, they don't know how to participate. So uh, I can see where that's really important. Um, now, your next camp is coming up when? The next full week camp coming up is going to be September 16th to the 23rd in 2017. Okay, and that, that takes place in Michigan. Yes, that takes place near Frankfurt, Michigan, which is in the northwestern part of the Lower Peninsula. Now, uh, I know it's a long way off, but the reason why we're talking about this now is because people need to make preparations, you know, budgeting and stuff to, to be able to get there and make their preparations to attend. And it's always uh, appropriate to plan ahead. But now, how how can people do? Do they need to come to your website and and register? How do they get involved? Yes, um, soon I will be having the uh, registers all set up on the website. And Mike, I think the best thing about my survival camp is that the price is just amazing. Um, you know, some survival camps charge you know two three hundred dollars to come out and 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 uh, learn and 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 get the hands on training, Mike. My camp is only $6 per day as an individual and $10 per day as a couple. Wow. You can't beat that with a stick. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen survival schools not quite like this. I mean, they're actually in a controlled setting uh, that costs a, you know, tremendous amount uh like you said up in the hundreds of dollars so that's a that's a bargain any day of the week uh so now they go to uh that's kaz versus wild.com that's k-a-z v-s w-i-l-d.com that's your official website is that where they'll go to 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 get more information and, and the registration absolutely right? mike that's where they'll go You've got a lot of other things going on. Uh, you're probably one of the busiest survivalists I've, I've met in a long time. You've got all kinds of ways. You've got YouTube channels and everything. Tell the people all the ways that they can connect with Cas vs. Wild. Well, the easiest way to connect with Cas vs. Wild is to email me at Cas vs. Wild, which would be Cas at Cas vs. Wild.com. That is a direct email to me, and I'm the only one that controls that email. So when you're emailing me there, you are getting the answer directly from me. Um, you're right, Mike. I have a YouTube, Kaz vs. Wild on YouTube, and that is also linked to my Google Plus page. I have my Facebook, Kaz vs. Wild page, and I have my Twitter, Kaz vs. Wild on Twitter. Now, folks, this YouTube channel is awesome. Kaz has been making videos for years now, and I mean years if you want to also look at videos from some of your other camp experiences, you've got the uh, little, uh, you know, shots and videos from those too, right? On there, so people can look and see what's taken place in the past. Absolutely. I have six full years of survival camp playlists on my YouTube channel. I am currently building the seventh season right now, doing the uploads currently. And, uh, you know, just like years in the past, you know, they are, it's an open forum. You know, we cover everything from water purification, the cooking meals, bushcraft style. Um, you know, one season we did chickens from live to stomach and we videotaped every aspect of it. You know, this is, this is a very real hands on survival camp. Um, one year we actually had a deer. We did a deer at camp. And so, you know, there are very many, many different aspects of survival that we add to each year. And it's just an amazing camp. It is so hands on. It is, it is unbelievable. And I'm so proud to, to be able to have this for an eighth year. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, now, uh, once again, folks, I know it's down, it's down the road, but that's why we're having Kaz on now is to introduce this to you, get you interested and, uh, let you do the research and, and prepare. Uh, obviously, you know, I guess anybody's welcome from anywhere across the country so long as they can make it to Michigan. Right? Absolutely. 
So plan ahead. This gives you many, many months uh, well into next year to plan and, and uh, budget so you can make the trip. And uh, we've absolutely immensely enjoyed you coming on the show for this uh, uh, sharing of this uh, activity. And uh, we'd also like to get you back on the show a little bit further down the road into next year as it uh, approaches closer to your camp date. If you're uh, willing to come back and and we'll uh, reintroduce people to this idea and and, uh, and hopefully get more people to attend. Absolutely, Mike. I, I am honored to be your guest tonight, and I will be honored to be your guest in future shows. Well, thank you so much, Kaz, for joining us this evening, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing more videos and more uh, events in the future, and uh, I think they'll be excited to check out what's going on with Kaz versus Wild, folks. Uh, thank you very much, Cass, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. All right, brother.